Hi, YouTube. Hey, YouTube friends and family. It's your boy, GB Reviews. Uh, this is a super, super, super quick uh, review of the new Volvo S90. It's, um, as you can see it right here, it's a 2019 S90. I got my my uh, opportunity to put my hands on it today. And um, so I don't really know a lot, a lot about it, but I, I wanted to show you a few features. I'll run through a little video inside, outside, so you can see what the displays and things that that look like. And then the trunk size, just so you can get a feel for it. Um, it's comparable to, you know, the E-Class Mercedes and the uh, Audi um, A7 and the BMW 5 Series. But there are some things that I can tell you that, you know, are different. So anyway, this is your boy. Let's get at it. All right, so we're getting back at it. Uh, so the S90, like I said, it's uh, it is similar to the BMW 5 Series, the Audi A7, and uh, the uh, Mercedes E-Class. And there are things I like about it. Like you look at this navigation screen. I mean, not the navigation screen, but the the display here. It's a huge display. It reminds me of the Tesla. And you look at how the car is um, laid out. And it's laid out like your typical luxury sedan. Um, it is, it's all right. You guys have had me do videos for a while now and you can see that it's just not my cup of tea. I do, I do videos all the time. I think, you know, Swedish engineering is great. I think the drivability is great. I think the things they sold their cars on is great in terms of safety, but um, I've been driving it for, you know, a while right now. And it, it's okay. I do like the low profile mirrors. I mean, that's kind of tight. Um, I do like the panoramic roof, which is um, which is definitely different than most of the cars in this class. So this is the one, it's almost like uh, the SUV. So let's look at that again. Panoramic roof. Um, the leather here feels like leatherette. Uh, my brother who drives a lot, he also noticed the thing that it's just not, it's just, it's nice, but it's not quite as nice. Um, and what I also found about the Volvo, which is cool, but it's not very intuitive, is this thing. I mean, like, it's good. It looks big. It looks like the Tesla. But when you start touching things, it doesn't really tell you what the hell you're supposed to be doing. You'd have to, you definitely, the Scandinavians definitely want you to read the manual. They definitely want you to read the manual. And... I don't know if I have time to read the manual if I'm trying to ball out. But anyway, that's a story for another day. But I guess that's why they give you the owner's manual in the car so you can actually load the owner's manual because you're going to need it because nothing is intuitive. Like even turning this on, this is the start stop button. In every other car in the world, when you do start stop, you push it and it turns on. Like, watch this, you two friends and family. Why would you do that? Who puts a button that you have to turn to get the car come on? I mean, I guess it makes it kind of special, but it's not very intuitive. And I just find it like kind of annoying, but maybe. Oh, uh, the wheel. So this wheel right here is a drive mode select. So you push it. So you would think if they put a wheel here, you should just be able to wheel it. But no, you got to push it. And then on your screen, it comes up the different drive modes. So you can do dynamic. This is very similar to like the Audi and the BMW and, and uh, Mercedes. You have eco mode, which is like if you're trying to really save on gas. You have the comfort mode, which really softens the suspension. The dynamic mode, now this is a sports. It has sports suspension. So if you put it in dynamic, the suspension will get hard. It doesn't get nearly as hard as the suspension in um, an RS7, like my RS7, um, but it is, it is, it tightens up a lot. And then you have the individual mode where you can program things yourself. Now, the thing I do like about this car is this has, I think this is a, uh, it is a uh, level two automated driving. So it does the lane departure stuff, but it also does self parking and things like that. Um, you know, so all in all, I think it's a, it's a decent car. I will drop the price of the car in there just so you know. It doesn't have a heads-up display, which I think is kind of whack, but you know. But it does have a good camera system. What you saw initially on the MMI was, um, let me see. It's just a thing. This thing doesn't make any sense. Um, 
but what you saw initially on the on the MMI was um All right, so cheap cell phone. So I was try, I was having some technical difficulty. That's why we went to we went, we faded to black so I could get back to uh, to try to figure out the screen. And then my brother noticed this button here, which is like a home button. And you click it, and it takes you to the different things. And then you can slide the panel. Oh look! And so see, you, if you mess around with it long enough, it'll tell you what to do. Look, it gives you instruction. But that just tells you that it's not intuitive enough. Is you got to give me instructions like this to tell me that I got to start swiping. And like I said, I, I love the touch screen. I think it's great. I love the size of it. It's nice. Um, it is a little jarring because I guess it's in daytime mode still. You see how bright it is. It's all in your face. And there's no map here, which I thought was kind of weird. It does have CarPlay. So if you connect to CarPlay con the compatible device, you can do all your maps. And the new version of the iOS for Apple and for the, I guess the new Android too, will let you play Waze in here. So that that's one of the reasons why I guess they don't put the map here, but they do have navigation here and they do have the level two automation driving. Um, we're gonna jump out and my brother is 6'3", I'm 6'4". We're gonna jump out, we're gonna get in the back and we're gonna let you see what that looks like. All right, so let's get in. All right, so we're getting in the back. We're in the back seat of the car and it's a lot of room. Look at this. I'm 6'4", and this seat was set for me. This this back seat compartment, it is a, dr a driver's car, and it also a passenger's car. It really has a lot of space. You guys have seen the video of my S4. I mean, not my S4, but the uh, RS7. And like I said, my brother's 6'3", I'm 6'4", and my hand is right here. Look, his headroom is cool because they have these divots in here. It's actually really nice. But the thing that you're gonna like the best is that from the back seat, you can control the front seat. Like he can move this up. And I'm trying to figure out where the controls are. They're somewhere here. But where did he do it from? Here, on, so on the passenger side and the passenger behind the passenger, there's a joystick. And so he can control not only the passenger front seat to go up and back, so you can give yourself more room in the back. So that means if you had a driver, you'd be balling. But the other thing he can control is he can control the, the windows on both sides and the sunroof. Mm -hmm. So see, he has the the panoramic thing. He can close it like, oh, it's too much light back here. He can close it, he can open it. All from the little joystick panel on the passenger side of the rear seat. So that's pretty good. I've not seen that in any other cars other than like you know like you in a bentley or you in a maybach i've not seen it in a kind of an everyday sedan and i think that that is a really cool feature so there are definitely some things that the the volvo has gotten right um like i said the space thing there's a lot of space there's a lot of space back here and my seat is all the way back uh from driving and i'm sitting in here and i'm like super comfortable like I could definitely do a 10 hour drive as a passenger. Easily. No problem, no problem. The leather, again, we talked about that. It's not very supple. It's so it's, you probably have the upgrade ability and I'm gonna, before I, you know, before I really upload the video, I'll read a little bit more about that and drop that in the comments. But uh, I would have to upgrade this leather if I was gonna spend a grip for this car just because it feels inexpensive for an expensive car and it looks kind of inexpensive for an expensive car and then here you have um the climate control it's the clear zone it's locked right now but you can unlock it and then you can control it back here easy one touch the touch screens are actually pretty it's pretty nice like I'm, I'm barely touching it and it works i don't know what the clean zone thing is but you know i'll explain it maybe i'll drop it in the comments too i guess that's a volvo thing um anyway uh, let me open up the trunk. We'll open up the engine and you look and see how it looks. Right. Oh, you feel me? Hey, uh, so, you know, we're going to do the same thing we do in all the videos. I'm going to show you how much trunk space it is. It looks kind of deep. I hope so. Cause your boy GB going for a ride. So as you can see from the back of this, 
it's not as much room as if you had one of the sport back luxury cars because you know when they go up they give you a lot more room but in terms of trunk space i'm 6'4 i'm in the trunk you could probably put in two big bags maybe a bag of golf clubs it'll fit in here no problem um the thing i think about the german manufacturers is that the inside of the trunk is actually finished better here in the inside of the trunk there's a lot of screws that you find um, exposed which if you threw your bags in they might scrape your bags that I don't like but again that might just be a personal preference thing all right we're gonna go look at the uh, engine all right here's the engine nothing special about it um, it's a V6 and uh, Fine. It runs quiet when you're driving, you can't hear it. It's a little sporty when you put it in sport mode, but all in all, it's just kind of your standard fare. It's big though. Like I said, it's uh, it's kind of a massive car for what you're getting. Anyway, we're gonna close it up, but that's it. Well, that's the Volvo S90. I did it really quickly because um, I wasn't really feeling this car. Uh, and again, that's me giving your honest opinion. I'm used to driving German cars, and so I'm a little biased. Like while I find the Volvo brand has been a consistent brand, it never gave me that kind of like fire in my belly to want to drive it. I'm glad I got a chance to drive this one. Like I said, there's a lot of things that you might like. I didn't really talk about it, but like the storage space is adequate. You know, it has this thing that, because it's kind of like perforated, or not perforated, but whatever, ridge, so you can cover the whole thing. Um, sorry. But yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm not feeling it. Nice car, rides pretty well. Nothing really special. Is it worth the money? Any car's worth the money if you have the money to buy it and you like that brand, so. I try to reserve uh, judgment on cars. For me, I wouldn't purchase it. Um, I drive it if I have the ability to drive it. But for me, I wouldn't purchase it. Now, that being said, I think it's a very nice car. I talked to you, um, very nice car for most people. I talked to you about and I showed you what we had in the trunk. I showed you what we had in the back seat in terms of space and um, you know it is comfortable if you're driving it you'll be fine if you like to have some of the newest features in cars it's fine in terms of being intuitive for me not very fine uh, some of the finishings like the handles they're nice they're things that i find too that uh, they're not very innovative on i think they copy from a lot of okay again you know I could be misspeaking, but it seems like they copy from a lot of other manufacturers. Um, you know, like these things right here seem like they're from the old Lincoln Continental. And these handles are Audi-esque. And this panel right here, this fake wood panel, is kind of like the BMW and the Mercedes. So there's some things that, you know, again, do I like it? Uh, sorry. Would I buy it? Probably not. Would I drive it if someone gave it to me? Of course, I'm driving it right now. So that's my honest assessment of it. It's super quick. Um, you're probably gonna chop me up in the comments by saying that I didn't really give you a lot of detail on it. That's because I wasn't really feeling it. But um, this is your boy GB Reviews. I'll do some more car reviews in the next couple of weeks. But uh, with that, it's your boy GB. I'm out. Subscribe, but like, but no.